Hey everyone, Dr. Rupa here, board certified pediatric ophthalmologist. And today we're gonna to be talking about patching. You might've seen a kid in your kid's class wearing a patch, or maybe your own child wears a patch, or perhaps you wore a patch yourself, and you never really understood why. Well, we're gonna be talking about it all right here, so keep watching. Dr. Rupa Wong. I'm a pediatric ophthalmologist and on this channel we talk about eye health, eye makeup health, and then my specialty which is pediatric ophthalmology, kids eyes, and strabismus which is misaligned eyes. And so today we're going to be talking about patching treatment. When I'm treating someone with a patch it is for a diagnosis called amblyopia. And amblyopia sometimes gets called lazy eye, but it's not that the eye is actually misaligned at all. It's the fact that the vision is decreased in the eye. And there's a couple different reasons for this. There's three different types of amblyopia. The first kind is refractive or anisometropic amblyopia. And what that means is when the glasses prescription in the two eyes is really different. So not just a little different, there's actually threshold numbers. Typically it's about three diopters difference between the two eyes. And so what happens there is the eye that doesn't see as well, the one with the stronger prescription, typically gets turned off by the brain. Now all of this only happens in children. So this happens from birth to about 13 years age. So that's called the critical period of development. So if you have a child that needs to wear glasses and there's a big difference between the two eyes, what the brain does is it doesn't like the vision with the blurry eye. It just thinks, hey, that's blurry. I'm gonna stick with the vision with the good, better seeing eye. And that can slowly start leading to a decrease in the vision in the worst seeing eye. And it's a cycle. So what pediatric ophthalmologists do is we recommend putting a patch on. And this has been shown in so many studies and initially even in monkey experiments, the rhesus monkey experiment, which is actually the most similar to a toddler's visual system. I know it's pretty crazy, but it's been also replicated in children as well. So what we do is we put a patch I'm going to open this. This is a plain patch. Usually I recommend fun patches for my patients because they like it. There's all sorts of um, really cute designs that you can do. So what you do is you put a patch on the better seeing eye. Just like that. There you go. And it forces the brain to use the worse eye. So I explain it to patients that it's basically like lifting weights for their weaker eye, just like you lift weights to make your muscles stronger. You are literally making the vision connections stronger between the eyes and the brain. So they showed that in the monkey experiments where they um, simulated unequal refractive error between the two eyes and then they sacrifice the poor monkeys, which is a nice say, way of saying that they kill them. And then they looked at the brains and they looked at the radiations from the back of the eyeball to the brain. And what they found was that the radiations just were not as arborized. They didn't have as many optic radiations from the worst seeing eye. When you wear a patch on the eye, you can actually create more connections between the optic nerve and the occiput, the region of the brain where all those vision connections get sent. So you're literally creating more connections. Again, this is only for kids up until about age 13, though some newer studies are showing it might be helpful in adults, but most of the traditional studies, the older studies have shown that that critical period ends around 13, which is why I'm so adamant when kids are young, if they are at risk for developing amblyopia, it's really important that they wear their glasses all the time. So if there's a difference, a three diopter difference between the two eyes, they have to wear their glasses or contact lens. Same thing. It's going to correct the vision in the worst seeing eye, strengthen the connections, and sometimes then you've got to put a patch on. So that is refractive amblyopia. There's another kind of amblyopia, strabismic amblyopia. So I mentioned before, strabismus is when the eyes wander. They can wander in, which is called esotropia. They can go out, which is exotropia. They can even be vertically misaligned. What happens when an eye is misaligned, and this is not always the case, there are some patients that have crossed eyes or eyes that wander out. They have perfect 20-20 vision in the eye. 
So that's why it's not quite the same thing. A lot of people say lazy eye and they use it interchangeably, but that can be a little bit confusing. So I like to use the words amblyopia and strabismus. So having strabismus or misaligned eyes doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have worse vision in one eye, but sometimes it can. And the reason for that is that when the eye is misaligned, you're actually not using the part of the retina that has been created for that fine central vision, you know, the, the eyes off axis. So you're using part of the peripheral retina where the rods and cones are not as closely packed. So as a result, the vision starts to drop. And then sometimes what happens is it creates a cycle. Then the eye starts to wander more and then the vision drops more and then the eye starts to wander more. So a lot of times if I have a patient with strabismus and decreased vision in one eye, I often recommend putting the patch on first because I want to boost the vision up as much as possible before doing eye muscle surgery. And of course, I love doing surgery. It's, it's what I trained for. I'm a surgeon and I love correcting those misaligned eyes. But we want to give every patient the best chance for success. So we really need to get the vision increased as much as possible. And the only way to do that is through wearing a patch on the better seeing eye and force the brain to start using the eye. And you'll also notice when the patch is on the eye, that eye that might've been crossed in or wandered out is now straight. Now, the third reason for wearing a patch is something called deprivational amblyopia. So just like it sounds, it's amblyopia or decreased vision in the eye from the eye being deprived of vision. Now, there are a bunch of different things that can cause the eye to be deprived of vision. It might be deprived because of a cataract. It might be deprived because of a lid droop. Um, and so these are really important to think about because oftentimes when I do cataract surgery on a young kid, parents just assume that, hey, you're gonna take the cataract out and the vision's gonna perk right back up the way it does in an adult. And it's not the case because if I'm doing cataract surgery, you know, in a two-year-old, that means for two years, the visual system did not develop well in that eye because it was being deprived of oxygen by that cataract. And a cataract is just a cloudy lens and actually can happen in babies and kids. So when I take the cataract out, I tell parents that's just half the battle or not even half the battle. Your part's the harder part because now we've got to start patching the good eye and force the brain to use that eye that it's just not used to seeing with. This is why actually the vision ends up being worse in kids with just a cataract in one eye versus if they have a cataract in two eyes. Because if you think about it, they had a cataract in two eyes, their brain's just used to blurry vision in both eyes. And if you take them out early enough, then there's no competition between the eyes. There's no rivalry between the two eyes. So those are the three kinds of amblyopia. And patching regimens are usually up until about age 13. In the old days, we used to think you could patch full time and that would be helpful. But now actually they think that a lot of the studies have shown anywhere from about two hours a day to six hours a day is sufficient. I never want to patch full time because you can actually cause the better seeing eye to drop in vision as well. So that's called reverse amblyopia from the patching treatment. So those are the different kinds of patching treatments. And again, if you wear a patch or know some kid that wears a patch, please be kind. This is a really tough situation for a lot of children. They hate wearing a patch. Just try wearing it yourself. I have perfect 2020 vision and I literally put this patch on for about 20 minutes and it was really hard for me to navigate downstairs. It's difficult. Now imagine being a child and needing to do that. So just reach out a hand in kindness if you can. And also just be aware that this might be going on in your neighbor's kid. This is what's happening. I would love to know if you guys have questions about amblyopia and patching treatment. I will reference some of those pivotal studies in the details section below. And please like this video, subscribe, let me know what kind of eye health topics you are interested in and I will produce them. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Mahalo.